Let the chaos reign. Chaos Reign presents Follow the Breadcrumb of Knowledge with the Crumb Snatcher. Broadcast August 25th, 2019. Enjoy. Expressed on Talk Real Solutions hosted by Tyrone Thompson at TalkRealSolutions.com are the views of Tyrone Thompson and do not reflect the views of TalkRealSolutions.com, YouTube, or etc. The content here belongs to Talk Real Solutions and its many contributors. Views and opinions expressed by all contributors belong to them and not TalkRealSolutions.com or Tyrone Thompson, the host, or etc. All data and information information provided on the site is for informational purposes only. Talk Real Solutions makes no representations as to accuracy, completeness, correctness, suitability, or validity of any information on this site and will not be liable for any errors, omissions, or delays in this information or any losses, injuries, or damages arising from its display or use. All information is provided on an as-is basis. In the world where there's crime, violence, murder, rape, and theft, and all form of atrocities that plague the world we live in today, what you're witnessing, we're living in a state of chaos, and it's a greater or more extremer chaos in the world we live in today. Good evening, black people. This is chaos here. In here. And tonight, I have a special guest. And we're going to delve into this thing we call knowledge. But before I give you the title for tonight's show, I would like everybody to go to TalkRealSolutions.com. Under, I mean, uh, under TalkRealSolutions.com, you will see a three-point plan for black empowerment, black achievement. On a three-point plan, there is a list of black-owned banks. I believe the count is still 30 or less than 30 banks still existing as black-owned here in the United States. So if you have a bank account from your regular established bank, I wouldn't mind if you create another account with a black-owned bank in your area near you. you know? And that's all in the website, so you can find where they're located if they're around your city. You know, I would advise just you know, move your money onto a black bank so you can start. And we could all, like, maybe – engage and practice, you know, save money and and deal with group ec- economics as a collective. Because as you know, with the black community, we very weak and, and lack um, proper management enough for our money. I mean, we don't make much, but the way how we spend and use our money, we could always do better. There's always growth for improvement. But under that, all that's in the website. Also on TalkRealSolution.com, 
you'll find the latest articles, news, and current events that plagues the black community and just in general here in the West, we call America or outside the globe. Um, also, you can find Talk Road Solutions on YouTube as well. You can type up Talk Road Solutions. There you find the list of every broadcast done from, I believe, 2013 or 14 to present. And this show been around for, I would say, an average of six years. Some might say it might be five, but we'll say six because six makes more sense. Um, but you can find every episode, including my show, ABC show, and all the other people that participate and do broadcasts on TalkWorldSolutions.com. And also, you know, Tom said, if you want to do a show on this platform, just give him a ring call, you know, for further detail. You know, if y'all ask, I will give it to you. You know, he's right now on the um, board right now monitoring YouTube. So, you know, if you want, if you feel that you could do a show on here at Talk World Solutions, you know, hit him up. His name is um, Richard Tyrone Thompson on Facebook. Let me see if I can make sure I get the name right. Yeah, Richard Lionel Thompson, you know. And we always want other people to bring a different element to the show, you know, bring something fresh, new. Um, I've done this show consistently now for years now. And, you know, it has ups and downs, but, you know, doing all these broadcasts, I have gained much respect and uh, people that do podcasts. And I learn a lot, you know. And like myself, I always find there's always room for some form of group improvement and growth. And I put myself to always try to do somewhat better. But, you know, that's all the information I'm going to lay out for you all tonight. So tonight's subject is titled, and I'm going to pull up my YouTube right now. Let me refresh. <clears throat> tonight. Tonight's subject, Chaos Rain presents Follow the Breadcrumb of Knowledge with the Crumb Snatcher. So, no further ado, I open up for the first time on Talk World Solutions, Crumb Snatcher. Okay. Peace, Brother Crumb. Are you there, sir? Yes, sir. I am, I am here. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Welcome to Talk World Solutions for the very first time. Brother Crumb, um, like any person that watches and views a lot of our great people doing works, whether it's sharing knowledge or putting out content, good or bad, I always find works of other people do much even greater or better than what I'm either doing or not doing enough. And I respect that, you know, because at the end of the day, we always, as a collective, try to fight the mind for our people to awaken their um, not only natural gifts, but to break out of the mental s spell of of a slave mindset. But other than that, um, before we start with our um, you know our discussion, we always like in talk with us. We have to take a step back before we take leap forward. So tell everybody a little bit about yourself for the first time listening. Peace and love to the listening audience. I am your humble brother, Crumb. I am a voice for the people. Uh, I am a uh, leader of the Aquarian Age where the great apocalypse or revealing will take place. And I am here to tell our story through our perspective. And, and for that, I have really... Um, stood out because it's been it, it it's been very raw it's been it, it's been very unapologetic it's been very fearless you know um and a, a, a large part of the conscious so-called conscious community online has really resonated with me from instagram facebook to youtube mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um crumb like everything, in the journey of seeking knowledge, what really ignite you in this journey? Because, like myself, because at 
my adult age, I never did seek, you know, knowledge like that. But it started to come full circle as I got a little older. Was it like with yourself, when do you feel that that certain way can come where you have to sit there and say, you know, living life as I is, there's not only something more, but something's not right that I feel that I've been lied to in my existence as a melanin man, black man. I'm not sure if you want to take on what really made you start this journey, this great journey. It's a very interesting story, actually. I was applying for the security job, and I um, I was trying to get the position up, up front because it paid more, but they hired me in the back, which paid less, but it turned out to be uh, a blessing in disguise or a gifted and curse, however you want to look at it. So in the back, there was nobody watching over me, so that was a very good thing. But I worked graveyard shift, and I was by myself back there, and it was very boring. And I had a computer uh, at my disposal, but the guy whose job I replaced, because he got fired, um, he got fired for watching gay porn. And um, oh, wow. I'm, I'm go- I, I, I promise you, brother, I'm, I'm, I'm going somewhere with this. So, okay, um, yeah, go, 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 go. You're good. You're good. Don't worry. <laughs> okay. So um, I have access to a computer, but they've put really tight restrictions on it to where the only thing you can access is educational channels. So I worked at that job for, I think, about two years. And I, and I think for about two years, I just read, you know, and a lot of it was just different articles, whether it be Wikipedia or news articles or, uh, you know, independent educational blogs. Uh, I, I just went on a reading spree, and that really took me to that next level. But then I... I came in in terms of like super awake or whatever you want to call it through more science. Uh, more science really took me to the next level, um, and that's that's kind of how you know you know and, and through those doors you know I went deeper into the rabbit hole in different uh, aspects aspects. But those are the two pivotal points that really took me to the to the next level. Mm-hmm. It's interesting you mentioned more science temple because, like R- Ramrat, um, usually um, I come across a few Morris, you know, whether good and bad, one particular one, and the brother always hard and emphasized, you know, of knowing the law or natural law, and I always ask this question to him: say, if you are seeking this knowledge, why don't you go full circle and try to become a more? Like, you know, go for the paperwork. And that's where the line drew because to his, I guess, um, I can't say excuse, but to his reasoning that I think he was somewhat more afraid going more go, going full-fledged with. So, and that's why I got off him. He didn't tell me that, but that's how I, I felt when he was explaining a little bit. But my thing is this, you know, when people that seek a knowledge or they come awaken, if they're going to, like, say, go full circle, like let's say they want to join an organization or stuff, they should be well read to know what they get into, the the um the positive and negative, before they jump forward if they're going to join any organization. Like me, I don't really participate in or join any organization because I'm a person that still want to operate freely from my own perspective. So that way I'm not hindered. If I know strength, I don't want really to be suppressed. But that's just me, you know, because I'm more a person that as I grow and learn, I gain more abundance, better understand not only the world I live in, but just by general information that was never revealed to me or like us when we uh, when we were boys becoming adults, you know. So that that's how I see it. Um, and like well, always, like my – yeah, go ahead. I agree with you 100%, you know, and I think that's where I bumped heads with a lot of people within our awakening processes because there's levels to the shift. And I came in through more science, but I, I, I didn't stop at more science. Mm-hmm. It, was, it was just like 
in terms of the conscious community, a lot of times what I've seen is what the family will do for the most part is wake up from religion, Christianity for the most part, and Man. then will end up inadvertently getting into another religion and going back to sleep, but it's going to be somewhat of a conscious religion. And though more science is not a religion, some people have made it a religion, and that's where the problem has occurred at. So now um, they kind of stop wherever they 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 uh, land at. And for me, I, I'm not going to say I went past more science because I did not, but mm -hmm. I I expanded with more science. So you know, I went into the nation of Islam. I went to Hebrew Israelite teachings. Uh, I, I went back into Christianity, Judaism, Islam, you know, and I just studied everything. You know, I remember studying, like, uh, what's that guy, what's that boy named Alistair Crawley? It was like, oh, don't study him, he's evil. And I'm like, yeah, I, I, I understand he's evil. No debate. However, yeah. you know, I want to know who this dude is or, you know, what's, what's all the hubbub about? You know, and I don't want to, you know, become ignorant because I'm scared or there's some fear around it, you know. Mm -hmm. So for me, I think that's what's really set me apart from the rest of the family is that, you know, I um, I didn't just go into one school of thought. And, and, and final thought before I pass you the mic, you know, even when we go to school, we don't go to school and just study science. You know, we don't go to school and just study religion. Mm -hmm. We don't go to school and just study, you know, uh, poetry or comedy or what have you. You know, we go to the we go to school and we study liberal arts. You know, where where we go through different schools of thought. So you know, my my viewpoint was in alignment to what the regular schools would teach. So within consciousness, I'm like, well, I'm going to go see what the Hebrew Israelites are talking about. I want to see what the flat earthers are talking about. I want to see what the vegans are talking about. I, you know, I just want to go through all the, you know, it, it's like college. You're like, all right, well, let me see. You know, I'm gonna, you know I know I got to take these classes, these pre prerequisites, but mm -hmm. beyond those, you know, I want to see if I can dabble in some psychology, and you know, I might change my major based on what of these classes I take. So, mm -hmm. for me, I I just kept an open mind. I I think that's what really gave me the edge, but also it kind of gave me some infamy because a lot of people don't like that. They're like, okay, well, you double dipping. It's like, well, yeah, I am double dipping, and I I I love it. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. Um. And that's the and one I think one of the weaknesses we we suffer as a race, men and women, is the fear factor. And I think with fear, it great, it brings a greater control. And a lot of people don't understand why we cannot really get out of the situation we're in. Is not because we don't understand, but the fear that puts into it to try to seek understanding. Even the unknown is fear. You know, to really understand these religions that people participate. They gotta not only understand that if they want to entertain it, but understand them all. From what's so different from Christianity, Judaism, um, Islam, more science, al all these books. We have to understand what is is there a link? Is there something that will link all of them that why these things are spread out? Why we why even let's say most of us here in America or majority us black people globally are heavily Christians. Do we really question the religion that we, we deal with? You know, because they said, you know, if you don't do this, something's going to happen. And that, seems to me, is much more detriment than anything because if I don't do this, then what? Then you go, there's going to be a punishment here now or in the after. So, you know, th that's my thing with, with um, the religion that I don't get. Um, and I was lucky because I never did subscribe or follow the religion heavily. You know, I you know, grew up around some of it, but it never really set well with me. It didn't really, like, what's the word? Made me um, feel, say, this is the way to go. 
And that's how I see it. Um, but moving forward, um, oh, yeah, I forgot to get the number to call in. The call for tonight's show is 712-770-4160. The access code is 915-411-POUND. I repeat, 712-770-4160. Access code, 915-411-POUND. I'm here with the Crumb Snatcher. Tonight's subject deals with we're going for the breadcrumbs of knowledge with the Crumb Snatcher. Now, current events. There was a lot of buzz. Well, well um, um, okay. if I could just yes, address that last point you had said before we go over the current yes, events. Please. Yes, please. You know, you were just talking about all the religions and, you know, their link. I was going to say that, you know, they all have different gods, you know, but the link is that all these religions have the exact same devil, you know. They, oh, they're all, okay. Talk about that. Yeah, go into that. That that no one has ever mentioned. I'm gonna hear this. Go ahead. Yeah. They're they're all practicing spookism, you know, mm-hmm. and that's even what the government is practicing. We saw with Christianity, they told us, you know, if you don't do it, you're gonna go to hell, and you know, the devil, and you know, the the uh, the monsters under the bed, and the, the, the boogeyman in the closet, you know, there's always this, this, this fear factor and this thing for us to be scared of, you know. Um, but the reality is they flipped it. And the reason they want, to, they want to make you scared of it is because these things that you've been taught to hate within these religions, these common links, is that, that devil is you. You are the devil. Your ancestors are the demons, you know. Um, And um, what you're going to see is where we've been taught to hate our history and our ancestors. Now, when you you look at these these demons, you're going to see things like voodoo or what the ancestors call voodoo. Or if you go back, the orig- original root is Ifa from the Yoruba people, you know, and they have only one God. You know, I've talked to some um, Ifa, uh, uh, some priest and priestess, and they'll all tell, they'll all say, you know, there's only one God. Now, there are many deities or aspects of God. Just like there's di- you know there's different aspects of who you are, you know. Um, so now, um, when when we say there are different aspects of God, some aspects of God are uh, feminine. Some aspects mm-hmm. of God are uh, negative. Mm-hmm. You know, so now these negative aspects of God, these these, these negative aspects of self are just parts of you that you must acknowledge and deal with. You know, Mm -hmm. uh, when we say, you know, who is the devil, uh, you know, you are the devil. The fight is within. I I remember even back when I was a Christian, brother, verily I say it to thee, back when I was Mm -hmm. a Christian, um, I was in Sunday school, and the, uh, the Sunday school teacher asked all of us, who is your worst enemy? Now, keep in mind, it's Sunday school, so the obvious answer is going to be the devil. Uh, however, the Sunday school teacher said to everybody that they were wrong. I was the only one. This is back when I was asleep. I was the only one who said, you are your worst enemy. The devil can, this is what the Bible says. The devil can only tempt you. You know, the devil tempted Jesus, and he said, get behind me. Get behind me, Satan. So now, you know, The devil can't make you do anything. He can only tempt you. You are your own worst enemy. So now when we say you are your own worst enemy, you are your devil. You know, they talk about this whole God thing, the Ark of the Covenant. Every time you you say you're going to do something and you don't do it, you're breaking the Ark of the Covenant. You're breaking the deal that you've made with God. The worst lie you can ever tell is the lie you tell yourself. I don't care if you lie to your mama, your daddy, in the courtroom or, or or to your wife, the worst 
lie. It's the lie you tell yourself. That's the because that's the that's the inner God within you telling you to do these things. And you say to yourself, Okay, self, I'm gonna do these things. And then when you don't do it, the the person you let down was yourself. You are God. You are the devil. Our ancestors are are these demons that they've made it look so bad. So uh, 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 one one last point, and then we can go to current events. So now, okay. so now when we're dealing with um, Halloween, when we're dealing with because keep in mind, uh, I connected. We're gonna we're gonna go in America, go down to Louisiana, you know, because they're the uh, the football team is called the uh, New Orleans Saints. Uh, mm-hmm. Now, saint is is another word for soul. So uh, these saints, uh, a lot of these New Orleans culture comes from Haiti uh, or Haiti, which comes from, uh, you know, which where is where we know voodoo comes from. Which a lot of those people come from West Africa, uh, Ifa land, Yoruba, or what we know as current day Ghana. So now uh, they'll tell you over there, voodoo came from them, and. Uh, over there, they wear masks, mm-hmm. and these parades, they call because well, they wear a mask during the parade. They call it a masquerade, and they have these masquerades every year, and everybody has has to divine, design the best ma- the best mask, and whoever gets the best mask gets candy. Mm-hmm. So now, this is brother. This has been going on for for thousands of years. So now uh, they take this uh, masquerade up to Europe because if you go and look at the Celts, who are now the current, they, well, originally they were called the Celts, the Celtics. Now they're called uh, uh, Scottish and Irish. But if you look at those people, the Celts, they have black origins. The masquerades came, uh, 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 came from, from their black side. Mm-hmm. And they t- they brought it over to America because they called it Sam Hain. They brought it over to America, switched it up a little bit, Americanizing it, and now they call it Halloween. And and little do they even know where this Sam Hain holiday, where they pay reverence uh, to the ancestors, they're they're now wearing masks making fun of the ancestors. And one last tidbit, and I'm trying to blow your mind. I'm tr- that's, this is my goal. Okay. 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 Now, the night that Halloween is, Halloween night, for the listening audience, Halloween night is October 31st. Is that a true statement, brother? Am I correct? On a Tuesday? Um, that's a good question. I have to look at the count. It's no, the one that's coming no, no, now. No, uh, no, no mm-hmm. not on a Tuesday. Every single year, Halloween is October 31st. Yes, correct. Oh, okay, okay. So October 31st. Now, um, the next day after October 31st is November 1st. Why is yes. this important? Because uh, Halloween is really Hollow Eve, just like Christmas Eve, the day before the big celebration. So if October 31st is Halloween or Hollow Eve, then what's November 1st? Well, go ask the Catholics, because they're the ones who stole your religions, who who... Who, who, who made you fear your, your own gods. So mm. now on November 1st, they have All Saints Day. Now, remember when I told you back in Louisiana, the football, team, the football team is named the, uh, the, the uh, New Orleans Saints. Orleans Saints. Yeah. Why? Because uh, November 1st is All Saints Day. November 2nd is All Souls Day. I told you the New Orleans mm. Saints are in New Orleans. In New Orleans, on November 1st and November 2nd, they celebrate All Saints and All Souls Day, where they where where they dress up like demons. Are you following me, brother? This this is the I day think, I think after. I'm following you. I think I'm following you. This is the day after up. Halloween. So you okay. know, with that said, brother, we can talk about current events. What would you like to go into? If you well, don't want to expand the, or ask any questions off that, I'm well, sorry. Well, let me let me let's go further. Now that is very. That, but that was very intriguing because I'd never followed that because usually I'm not a fan of Halloween per se. And, you know, I think during the month of October going on November, that's where the Zodiac Libra switched to Libra to Scorpio at that same month, you know. And I always like to say, isn't it ironic 
that Libra is the balance scale, but during that same month going on to the Scorpion, I never correlate or connect and say, why would people celebrate uh, what, what they call a demonic holiday, per se Halloween, in that month, where, that, where there should be a balance, and it is, a, and I, I don't really know much about the zodiac per se. I'm not well versed. I don't know if you're going to expound on that of the connection between the two zodiacs that lead to the Halloween, and then the two days later, Saints and Eve. Like, is there any correlation to all that? This particular month is chosen. Now, uh, in terms of the Libra and the Scorpio, I'm not 100 yeah. percent sure. I, I, okay. I don't really get that deep, but one thing you said, uh, well, I'm sorry, I, I do get that deep, but the connection between Libra and Scorpio I'm, doesn't come to mind. But the other thing you had said that I wanted to expound on is, you know, these um, holidays are considered demonic. Now, if we look mm-hmm. at the... I'm sorry? Yeah, go ahead. I'm, just, I'm saying yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because okay. Cause... Well, um, actually... I think we have a brother who wants to call home. Um, Let me check my board, man. Hold on a second. Uh, one second. Yeah, I have one call. You want to take this call? Sure. All right. I'm going to open the line now. Who's this? <coughs> Hello? Yeah, how you doing? This is Fax. How you doing? Wonderful. Good show you're having. Very interesting. Yes. You have a question? Yeah, just a couple of comments, and I'm going to have a question. Just a couple of comments, if you wouldn't mind. Um, okay, go ahead. When, you, when I was listening to, you know, a couple of comments I have to make uh, is that when you uh, listen to, uh, you know, the, the Halloween tales, and it's interesting that um, I'm not in any information about Halloween, but I think, I think of the Egyptians. The Egyptians... <laughs> They they dressed up like animals, and those animals had some type of significance to them. They dressed up in costumes and things of that nature. So I guess each culture, each group can have their own significance of what dressing up at a certain particular time and certain garments and to to certain things that is not natural um, is the way uh, some people are. I understand that, but... As far as the traditional Halloween, um, yes, the, the history he's given is definitely correct, but it's not as scary as it is when we was growing up. Halloween is it is scary anymore. Uh, people just dress up nowadays just to say we dress up this time of year. Really, no meaning. I think I don't think. Um, just to say we dressed up in a different type of way, something maybe scary, or just to get into an outfit, or just act crazy, or just dress crazy and bizarre and have a good old time and make money. It's a big uh, economic boom uh, for these holidays. And this is another thing. I, I believe um, I'm hearing that you're basically a versatile person and you don't want to keep um, no one in you in the box and you study a lot of things. And um, <clears throat> I definitely appreciate that uh from a type of guy like you um and you you know i i understand that man and uh you you you're well rounded and we all should be well rounded but another thing i want to say is that um you when, you when you were talking about the education correct and you were saying see, the different school of thoughts there's the different schools of thoughts falsifiable and unfalsifiable education there's two separations. And when you talk about f- falsifiable, that means things in the science, measurement, things that you can manifest, you can hold things into your hand, you can see it produce more scientific realms. Then there's the unfalsifiable, the theory realms and, you know, the theology and all those types of things. So, um, that's basically how I separate certain things. And a lot of the philosophies, even with Halloween and how do with the spirits, that's in the unfalsifiable realm of education. There is nothing wrong with it, but it's unfalsifiable. It cannot be duplicated over and over and over again. 
um, you know, you know, things of that nature. So we have to watch out, but everyone has its right uh, uh, to do that. So I, well, my question to you is, um, what is your biggest challenges? Who do you um, actually, you know, your number one, I guess, thing that you're trying to make people aware of uh, that's in our society? What is the main thing that we have to uh, basically worry about uh, in, in the future? That's all. Thanks, thanks for that. You're very welcome. You're very welcome, brother. Thank you so much for calling in. I wish we could have uh, found out where that brother was from. Do we know what city or state he was in? Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm up X. You're from Baltimore, right? Hello? I think, I think, I think he, uh, he was going to take his answer uh, offline. But, yeah, okay. Shout out to Baltimore, Marlon. Baltimore's in the house. Salute to the family uh, out there. Um, with that said, you know, um, I'm going to keep it 5,000 with you, family. My, my biggest, uh, you know, uh, issue, problem, bad guy, the people that are really busting my ass is fucking white supremacy, you know, losing white people for the most part. But they're, they're all one and the same, to be honest. So, you know, um, I don't think it. I don't think it can get more candy than that, you know. Um, anytime I talk about some shit dealing with white people, all my pa- not all my pages, but most of my pages get shut shut down. I get demonetized. You know, we can talk about Bigfoot. We can talk about aliens. We can talk about black-on-black crime. We can talk about Hitler. We can talk about, you know, uh, 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 bestiality, you know, yeah. but... You know, Lord forbid we talk about white people's shit, you know, and see, I'm just that dude who's going to come out there, you know, and don't get me wrong, I don't always talk about white people's shit. I talk about just about anything and everything. But, you know, mm-hmm. I definitely will not uh, hold no punches for nobody. I talk, you know, this whole thing that that went down with the uh, Jay-Z and the NFL, you know, I said, fuck Jay-Z, fuck Obama, fuck the NFL, you know, so mm-hmm. on and so forth. And then, um, uh, um, uh, what else had happened that I was very critical for black people? I, you know, just very critical, like, oh, uh, the, uh, the uh, chicken challenge. I'm like, fuck all y'all black people, you cooning out here. You know, I don't hold no punches even for my people. Brother, the first toes I ever stepped on were my own. So now uh, the whole Jeffrey Epstein shit went down. I talk, I talk cold shit about him. I talk cold shit about fucking uh, uh, Hillary Clinton. I talk cold mm-hmm. shit about um, uh, uh, Joe Podesto. I, I went into their ass. I don't, uh, guess, guess who got shut down for 30 days for talking, talks, speaking against child pedophilia? Guess who got shut down on Facebook? You know, so when the family asked me what is my biggest, op- you know, my biggest uh, uh, issue or challenge, shit, dealing with fucking white people and they shit, you know, uh, mm-hmm. you can, you know, I, I remember back when the whole uh, – uh, uh, Al Qaeda uh, uh, fake ass uh, red scare, you know the boogeyman. First it was Al Qaeda, now they've just magically disappeared. Then it was Ebola, Ebola magically just disappeared. Then it was ISIS, and then as soon as Obama's gone, ISIS is gone. Then now it's Trump, so now it's Russia, and it's always this this boogeyman and this bad guy, and we've got to do this and that, or you know they're gonna just. Fuck up democracy, you know, so when I go into, you know, I talk shit about anybody and everybody, but the second I say some shit about white people, my shit gets shut down, so, you know, that's that's my biggest issue, shit, fucking white people, goddamn. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, but um, before I say something, you know, I was looking at chat room, and I guess Mr. Neckbone has something to say about New Orleans, and like, all right, so he can call in to get his answer, to sit back and chat, going back and forth. I don't really want to entertain that because any question you have, you, you know the number, Joe. We're not going to be responding through chat rooms of either agreement or disagreements. You know, I might respond to chat room um, crumb, but like always, if somebody has a disagreement, they know the number. You understand me? Absolutely, and you know, I I welcome opposing thoughts, and I would I would be one hundred percent respectful uh, to Joe if he were to join us. I'd be humbled and uh, appreciative because you know we don't want to have a narrative that is lopsided, one sided, biased, you know, egotistical, or just you know, it's a 
it's not even a conversation anymore. It's just an echo room. So, you know, I value uh, different perspectives uh, uh, so that we can kind of get, an, you know, so we can let the audience make their decision to say, hey, you know, I heard what Crum said. I heard what some of his opposition said. And this is, you know, how I felt that he handled it and how I felt, you know, overall. Now, what, what, what our friend on um, YouTube ha is saying, and overall, I want to say whether you love me or hate me, thank you for even being here. He could, he could be spending his time doing anything, but he's spending his time over here with us. So, you know, uh, shout out to him for rocking with our Crumb TV, Crumb Snatcher, and Chaos Reign. You know, so shout out to mm -hmm. him. Um, mm -hmm. But with that said, you know, he was talking about uh, the significance of All Saints Day and All Souls Day. And um, uh, I never said anything about, you know, the significance of it, uh, or, or if I did, uh, I didn't mean to. I was just saying uh, this. Excuse me. He because he, he was saying, oh well, there's there's another holiday that they celebrate on that day as well. Sure, you know, I I'm not putting that past it. That very well may be. However, comma the reality is, uh, when we're dealing with Halloween, Halloween is a three day holiday. Halloween mm -hmm. is a three day holiday. Uh, excuse me, holiday. And on that night, October thirty first. The veil between our dimension and the soul dimension, or what they call, because well, we are in the physical dimension, 3D, they are in the, uh, the, uh, the, the uh, solar dimension. I don't know if that's 1D, 2D, or what, what you may call that. Uh, shit, that shit maybe even be 5D. I don't know. But nonetheless, it's, it's mm -hmm. another dimension that we can't see or touch. It, it, it exists simultaneously with us, but, you know, we're not aware of it because we can't experience it through phenomena. So what I'm saying is that on that night of October 31st, the veil between this dimension and that dimension is at its thinnest. Now, that doesn't mean that ghosts and goblins are going to be out. That's, that means you have a direct connection to the ancestors. You have a direct connection to God. You know, it would be sometimes the ancestors would, would uh, attempt to speak to God and not get an answer for months. On that night, you speak to God, he'll speak back immediately. You ask the ancestors for an answer, uh, so you ask them a question, and they will respond immediately. So this goes, and, 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 and my point behind bringing up New Orleans on November 1st is because once the veil is the thinnest, on that night, even, you know, because when we're dealing with Catholicism, Catholicism is a, is a whitewashed mirror image of voodoo. For the listening audience who may not be aware of this, Catholicism is a whitewashed mirror image of voodoo. Man. So now you're going to see Man. where both of these cultures or religions or what have you, they're going to have these, um, these very uh, uh, parallel traditions. Well, okay, the, the Catholics do it on November 1st, and, and you know, the... Uh, the old, well, they call those Wiccans or witches or what have you, you know, uh, or voodoo priestess, voodoo priest. You know, uh, these people, they're going to do it on November 2nd. Now, whether there's another shit out there in New Orleans that may be popping and may be bigger, so be it. You know, be that as it may. It, 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 does, it does not negate the fact that on November 1st, the day after Halloween, they celebrate the spirits. The Catholics, the saints, they'll go to the graveyards. Brother, I'm not talking about spooky shit right now. They will go no, to the listen. fucking graveyards and light candles to, to uh, pay reverence. Down in, um, in uh, West Indies, to the listening audience, I know we have some Europeans, and shout out to them because they are listening, but to the listening audience that may be from Jamaica, that may be from Trinidad, that may be from Grenada, anywhere in the West Indies right now, uh, well, right now, they probably do parties and shit, but anybody who grew up from the old school, because I'm, I'm damn near in my 40s, so you've got to bear with me. I'm a little bit old. Anybody from my generation, they will tell you. In the West Indies, when we was kids, they would go to the graveyard. They wouldn't go house to house collecting no fucking candy. They'd go to the graveyard, light candles, to give re and pay reverence to the ancestors. And on that night, the ancestors would, would reply back directly and say that we are with you, uh, uh, from uh, you know, uh, 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 from now until always, mm. until the end of time. I see, I see, I see. That's real homage to the ancestors when you sit there and give. And you know, you bring up a very good point that this is the only time of night 
or out of the year where you're able to get a real connection. Now, mind you, Crown, we have, even though on this show, particularly, you know, saying people, you know, they deal with um, atheism, and uh, so that's cool to them. But me, I'm more open minded. You know what I'm saying? I don't sit there because you know if I don't see it, it don't exist. I mean, I don't, I don't go by that stupidness. You know? Like I have people in my family, I have friends that have the and have seen, you know, spirits. You know? Right. I'm talking about the ones that that they dream. They actually, even the little baby, will sit there and have these torments, and the parents won't know, and they go see somebody that is an expert in a certain spiritual cults, and they sit there and, you know, he tells them what to do, and eventually the, the, the thing the baby experienced goes, gone. This ain't no, no, no game here, you know? you know? And I right. know, you know, I'm, I might get pushback from this, you know, but and I don't talk about it because, you know, we live in a world where it's a, if it's scientific, if it cannot be proven scientifically, it does not exist. You get me? Now, if I could, you know, not to cut your wisdom, but let me just, address that really quickly because I know a lot of times the family depends on science, but let's just be frank with it. Based off science, we don't have a soul. Scientifically, no one has been able to prove that we have a soul. So how, 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 how much are we going to depend on science? Because science has not been able to prove it. They just haven't had, they just haven't found proof. Mm -hmm. Science has not said there's, or there's so many things where science just does not have an answer. Their, their, their methods aren't sophisticated enough to come with a, with, with a sound conclusion. You know, but, 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 but my issue is how we give these people so much credit. And they're like, well, if science can't, well, science says you don't have a soul. Are, are, you, are you going to say, hey, you know what, I, don't, I, I believe that I don't have a soul because science has not been able to prove it. If you're willing to say that, then I'm with you. But if you can say, hey, you know what, Crumb, I know science can't prove it, and I'm not on no fucking religious shit, I'm on some spiritual shit, because I know that I'm not a, I'm not a, a, a human having a spiritual experience. I know that I'm a spirit having a human experience. I know goddamn well I got a soul, Crumb, and I know goddamn well some of these people don't have a soul. So now, you know, you'd be like, but you know what, science, science can't prove that. You'd be like, well, you know what? There are limits to science. Science has <laughs> limitations, but we treat mm-hmm. science as, as if it's something that we've got figured out to the T, or we have it down to a science. We don't have it down to a science. Virtually nothing we have is down to a science. That's why the ancestors' science is more sophisticated than ours even to this day. We'd be like, oh, we've come so far, but the ancestors were able to do some shit scientifically that we've yet to accomplish. So my apologies for cutting you. I'm just saying, in terms of when we talk about science, don't get me wrong, I love science. But I mm-hmm. understand it has its limits, and we can't overlook that. Okay, I agree. I agree. Let me give the call number again. Um, the call number for tonight's show is 712-770-4160. The access code, 915-411-POUND. I repeat, 712 770 Four one six zero access code nine one five four one one pound. You know I was gonna talk about the Jay Z thing, but I think you already clarified. But um, let me open this line because somebody raised their hand. This is good. Hello, I open your line. Who's this? Yeah, guys, this is me again. Um. Okay. Did Did, did you hear it? Um, Crum. Yeah, I just heard. I just want to. Um, and he said okay. he didn't mind anyone challenging them um anything i'm not here to cause a ruckus or anything I, i'm surprised i'm the only one calling tonight god be um but a good show man good show good great great guest yeah yeah great guest um but see brother what you're doing you're going to that unfalsifiable term you know you, you talk about the soul and you talk about the spirit what i would say scientifically well, you may I may consider what may be a soul, what may people do what they do, is coming to conclusion. And this includes me, is their past experiences, their mothers and fathers' DNA chromosomes, the genes, the traits, the environment they in, makes that person who the hell they are. Now, 
one thing about it is people say, well, you can change the soul by religion. Well, you also can change that soul by the way we think, what their knowledge may be, the change of their environment and things of that nature, how they um, go through their trials and tribulations and their sorrows and grief that we all on this phone is going to share. It's about past experiences, too. It's about that DNA as to something, to something that we can measure. But any time that we get into the realm of, I know what the creator of the whole entire universe wants for us, and you listen to me, and I know what that God wants, that he God, not a she, I don't know what it looks like. They call it a he. I know what he wants, and you listen to me, and you do as I say. If not, you're going to hell, and I don't want nothing to do with you, and I can't communicate with you on any type of level because I'm higher than you. You're a deeper soul. Um, so sometimes we take signs and try to understand people, why they do what they do, um, to see if we can, you know, try to change. And, and, and that's something hard because we all struggle in our own lives, and we're all going to have our own personal ba uh, battle that each individual is going to go through. Um, so, um, and we're just trying to work it out. But, yeah, man, but I understand what you're saying, but uh, sometimes science helps that out, some type of measurement and, and, and calculating on what you've been doing and, you know, looking back at your life and things of that nature. That's a calculation, something that you went through, something that could be proven, you lived your life. It's not something that uh, sometimes can be a mystery. And one thing I'm going to say, and I'll, and I'll fall back and I'll listen to your response, is sometimes unknowing can be sometimes peaceful too. Yes, fear can be a part of unknown, at being in the unknown because it's between happiness and sad. You don't know what's going to happen, but it's just unknown. And, then, and, and, and not knowing is knowing that you don't know. So uh, a lot of things is about uncertainty, man, and uh, that's the, I, I, that's why I think we have a lot of fights going on into our uh, political system. But um, but that's all I gotta say, man. Um, all facts. You know, somebody in the chat room, I think by the name of Mr. Black Panther said, "Are you drunk?" You there? Now, um. The brother d does have a little bit of a slur, but, you know, uh, so mm -hmm. a lot of the stuff that he's saying, I have to admit he is coherent. Um, okay. And I did follow him, and I can even add value. Um, okay. But before I go to what he was saying, well, actually, no, I'll just jump into it before I even lose thought. So he was just talking about, you know, science um, and the the one thing i the, the one thing that did not sit well with me is that you know he didn't really bring up anything through science or you know where they could even verify any of these things you know uh but nonetheless uh the other thing was when he was talking about the fear of the unknown uh and you know knowing is not knowing you know, that's that's right and exact. The more you know, the more you realize that you don't know. And it's it's a great paradox. Some would even call that the secret. Uh, now, um, when we're dealing with this fear and these gods, we have to define and really analyze who these gods are because, you know, the gods seem, to, uh, seem like they don't know and that they're full of fear, you know. And um, even though... Some people would say I'm an atheist. You know, uh, most would not call me a Christian, but I want to stand firm in my Christian roots. I came in, I, you know, though I, I woke up here and, I, you know, I had these experiences there, I was raised a Christian. I was born into the game as a Christian. It won't even like, it won't even like in my household you could be anything else. You had to have been a Christian. My shit was some cult. We... You know, in the black community, we do Christian. Christianity is a fucking cult. In mm -hmm. the black community, Christian, you can't be 
anything other than a Christian and live in your mama house. You practice anything other than Christian, you, you, you're liable to get kicked out the house. Your family like, yo, we can't, you burning candles in this bitch? No, 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 no. They will you kick you out altar? in a second. You got altar? Are you bringing up the devil in this place? No, right. get, the, get the fuck out. Get the fuck out. Yo, yo, you're right. You, know, you hear stories of people that, that does that in households or anywhere particularly. They will try to rush you out and try to kick you out of the household. They find right. it because they you, you're bringing up the devil. You're bringing spirits. Right. Right, right. So, um, you know, with that said, um, (laughs) I do uh, have Christian roots. So these are my Christian roots. So, you know, long story short, which I'm very bad at that. I will make a short story long. So uh, who is God? Who is So we look into the Bible, and God creates man in Genesis. Now, He doesn't say who man is. He just says he creates man. And now, now keep in mind, in Genesis, he he just creates shit with the snap of a finger. Let there be light. Let there be animals. Let there be fucking people. You know, he's just creating shit at a snap of a finger. In Genesis 2, he's making shit, like, by hand. He's on some... All right, I'm going to make man. Let me give me some some, some dirt. We're going to put some water in, mix this bitch up. You know, uh, okay, here we go. Like planting. I'm sorry? It's like planting. Well, just, you know, when we think of God, we think of like a fucking genie. He's like just, you know, he's just, you know, I remember, uh, um, uh, I think it was uh, I Dream of Genie, and all she did was fucking winkle, twinkle, or uh, uh, wiggle her nose. Like, you know what I mean? And, you know, da-da, you know, whatever would happen, like, Genesis 1, God is doing it like that. He's just, ah, boom. Well, he's just speaking things. In Genesis 2, God, you know, he has like a, a toolkit. You know, he's, he's doing magic tricks. You know, don't, don't forget, in Genesis 1, when God created man, he created them. Uh, you know, <clears throat> man and woman. In Genesis 2, when God goes to create Eve, he's on some... Uh, Doogie Hauser, you know, you got to be of a certain age to know who Doogie Hauser is. He was like this young medicine dude. I'm sorry, this young surgeon. But anyway, you know, God uh, waits till Adam goes to sleep, so he puts on some anesthesia, cuts open his rib, pulls out a out a rib, sews the rib back. Like, whoa, God is sewing up the wound. God applies iodine. Like, whoa, God. Mm-hmm. You know. So so anyway, I digress. So now. Uh, we see God having limitations in, uh, uh, a, immediately after Genesis 1, God has limitations, which indicates this is not the same God. In addition to that, even if you go in the New Testament, this God is really not God over there. You know, this God uh, has a son, and he's got to hide him from the king. Hold on. You got to hide your son from the king? Ain't you the same God that flooded the whole damn earth? And now you hiding, you hiding from from a from a mere mortal. So now, uh, God God goes up against the king. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Actually, that was Herod. Now you know, uh, 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 God goes up against uh, Pharaoh. He says, "I'm gonna kill all the firstborn." Well, well, you're gonna kill all the babies. Why didn't you just kill mm-hmm. Pharaoh? You, you, you could just kill Pharaoh and been done with it, but you're killing all the babies. Now, one more point, and then we can move on. One more point. Who, who, who is this God? Last point. So now, let's go back to Genesis, chapter 2. God then did his surgery. You know, he didn't snap Eve into existence. Okay, let there be woman. Boom, woman. He didn't, he didn't do, he, you know, okay, let me just, you know, get my scalpel, you know, what, you know, he even did some, 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 you know, home experiment thing and created Eve through that. So now um, he tells them, okay, you can't eat of the fruit um, because I said so. You know, and he, he kind of just leaves it at that. So now the serpent goes to Eve and the serpent says, do you know if you eat this fruit, you will be like God. Now, this is the mm-hmm. thing, brother. I need, I need, to the listening audience, I need you to follow me. I know that you're, you're caught up in your religious dogma and, and you just believe it to be a certain way, but what they call crumb snatcher is not an atheist. They call me a Gnostic. 
I believe, but I believe that God was a devil and the devil was God. I'm a Gnostic. Gnostic sounds like it starts with an N, but it starts with a G. If you look at the Masons, some people will say that, that um, there's a G inside of the, um, of the, uh, mm. the square and compass. And oh, you mean like the Grant Lodge, the Mason? The, 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 you're incorrect, the, sir. Sir, so you need to be corrected because you're talking about my area uh, expertise. I'm an ag- agnostic. Who you is? mean to say, I mean, oh, this is this is me okay. again, the one with the slur oh. sir, sir, speech, sir. Oh, and I'm okay, not going to okay, go okay. into that because, because I don't respond to trolls. If you're an IT, you tell all your staff. You do not respond to trolls. So I'm the one with the slur speech, sir, okay? Now listen to me closely, okay? You say you're an agnostic. You're talking about with the AG. No, you have to be gnostic with the G in the end. Agnostic is unknowing. That means we don't believe in it. We're not, we're not going to say there is a God. We're not going to say there's not a God. We're not going to say we know how to describe God. We say for a fact is a measurement. Everyone believes in a God. Or you may believe in a God, but you do not know. Believing and knowing is two different things. And we just say that we do not know. And we'll find out how everything plays out eventually. So what I'm saying is... um, if when you say that you are someone who believes in a god and a devil and that you uh it's g it, it starts with a g and the n is the first two letters agnostic is the j is the a g and the n okay the first three letters so um that, that i just want to correct you on that brother cuz i don't want you to go around the world speaking with correct speech not slur speech and misdefining uh, or, or, or not telling the people or defining yourself incorrectly when you're using the word. You're giving yourself a title and you're defining yourself incorrectly. So um, that's, that's, that's all I have to say. I'm going to talk to you guys later, man, on the uh, After Hours show. Yeah, you have a nice one, sir. Okay. Okay. Um, I guess. Oh, I didn't even know he was still on the line. I, well, I didn't know either, man. Um, I'm but- sorry? No, I didn't know either. But moving on, that that was a little surprising. But anyway, um, yeah, I, I follow you, um, Crumb, with agnostics, like you were saying before. Um, yeah, that makes sense. Um, I think I had one brother on here a couple months ago that was uh, agnostic. I think it was BGS Igmo. He might be agnostic. I could be wrong. I know he's also one of those too. But that's another story. But you know. We'll go on to current events. Um, the one thing that that was circulating over the net the last couple of days, besides the Jay-Z thing, I'm not sure if you heard about this crumb. A 15-year-old girl that's going to be 16, that's supposed to turn 16 at the end of this year, got raped and killed by her white father. Have you heard about this story? You said a 16-year-old girl? Well, she's 15, was going to be six, turn 16 this year, but she, she made her um, transition a few days ago by her father. Her father raped her and killed her. Actually, today was the, I think today was the funeral for her. You heard about this story? No, sir. All right, let me find and pull up, give the proper name. And for those that, um, the call number again is 712-770-4160, access code, Nine one five four one pound. Uh, let me pull this up. Um, you said fifteen years or fifteen weeks? No, no. A fifteen-year-old girl, a teenager, got killed by her father. Oh, I'm just gonna pull it up. In Texas? I think it was in North Carolina. Hmm. Huh. No, I'm gonna pull up. While you're pulling up, just to let the family know, uh, I am your brother Crumb. I am on Crumb TV on YouTube. I am on Crumb TV underscore on Instagram. Crumb TV uh, or Crumb Snatcher at Crumb TV on Facebook. Um, so just check me out in all those places. I, 
I go hard everywhere. Um, also, you know, I I'm not adverse to you know anybody else's ideas or thoughts, even if they're contradictory. So please feel free uh, to call in. What is it? Seven one two seven seven zero forty one sixty. Yep. Uh, the participant code, code is nine one five four one pound. The access code okay. is nine one five four one pound. So when you call in, you have to. Type the X code with the pound, and I'll see you on the board, and I'll open your mic. Okay, I found it. I'm, I'm probably going to hit this. It's titled, this is titled, North Carolina father accused of raping 15-year-old daughter before brutally killing her. Union County, North Carolina father who turned himself in for the murder of his 15-year-old daughter has been charged with kidnap, rape, connection with her brutal death, and the sheriff's office said Joshua Lee Burgess is now charged um, stationary, statutory rape of a person 15 years of age and younger, first-degree statutory sex offense, first-degree kidnapping, and first-degree sexual exploitation of a minor. Um, Burgess walked into the sheriff's office over the weekend and admitted in detail that he killed his 15-year-old daughter, Zara Josephine Burgess. The teenager girl was found dead inside their home on Hampton Meadows Road Sunday morning. Deputies said, okay, so this happened a week ago, and her funeral was, I believe, today or tomorrow, one of the days. According to medical examiners, the 15-year-old death was the result of a sharp force injury to the neck. So this man, I guess, you know, had his way and just slit her throat with a knife. The details of the murder are indescribable. Every officer and detective involved in this case is feeling the effects of what happened to this child. There is no logical answer to explain why this man did what he accused of doing. Now, so let me stop right there. I'm not going to continue reading. Now, the reason I mention this, okay, and now that you're here for the first time, and I remember a couple of YouTubers brought this to my attention, and I didn't really express my thoughts on so I think on one guy show I did. But I, I come out and think, say that, you know, when we engage in certain relationships with non black people, these are the situations we put ourselves in. Especially if you're a sister and you're engaged with a non black man. And from what I'm finding out, this man had a criminal well, he, he did some things. They probably not found criminal records, but he'd been doing some things. You know? And that his daughter was, you know, been sexually molested, rape, or we want to call it, before she was killed. So this is not the first time she's been, I guess, raped. It is that one night when, you know, the guy probably just snapped and just ended her life. Um, I don't know if you have any thoughts or opinions to what I've read. I just gave my perspective. That, that's his blood daughter or like his stepdaughter? That is her blood daughter. She broke, um, this man have sexual relationships with a black mother, or a black woman, procreate, had their daughter, and he killed his seed. You know, that's not no step, that's his actual daughter killed. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So you said you would like to know what I think about that? Yeah, your thoughts and opinions. This is like, this is what's current a week ago, but, you know, give your take on it at least. You wanna? You know. Absolutely. You know, I'll take a stab at it. Uh, and um, I think one thing about me is that I try to make my my stance clear. I'm I'm pro segregation. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm pro uh, interracial uh, non interracial relationships. I'm mm-hmm. I'm anti interracial relationships. Okay. You know, much better. Okay. Do I hate people who have interracial relationships? No. I'm okay. anti gay relationships. Do I hate mm-hmm. people who have gay relationships? No. I'm anti abortion. Do I hate women who have abortion? No. I'm just taking a stance against these things. I don't hate the particular people. Um and uh with that said uh, when when dealing with uh, 
I'm sorry, my apologies. Let me let me back up two steps because I was uh, mm-hmm. I got a little sidetracked with talking about the uh, the gay part, uh, and I was usually just writing all my stuff down in the in the actual uh, the notes in here. Like I was like, okay, so when you were talking, I'm like, okay, now I'm just gonna type, you know, write my stuff in here because usually I don't have the opportunity. Like, oh, I should have wrote it down. But nonetheless, mm-hmm. uh, I was making some point about what was the last thing you had said. My apologies. The last thing I said, and I think I we asked it was the this is a stepdaughter, and I saw this is oh yeah 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 okay 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 I'm back on target I'm back on target it was that girl yeah. so um. I take a strong stance on all these things. So the stance that I'm taking on that one is, yeah, I do not believe in interracial relationships. We should not even mm-hmm. be uh, uh, messing with the people who don't even have the same religion as us. I'm taking it back to the old school. Your grandma, your great grandma, she did not only did she not mess with people outside of her race, she also didn't even mess with people outside of her religion. That's mm. how. That's how you know extreme they uh, they uh, took it. Now, now somebody says, and I just want to have the opportunity to address this real quick. Yet, uh, yeah. uh, yet he's on your Crump TV team. Not that I have any hate or anything towards you. I think she might be talking to somebody else. I'm sorry, I don't know. Um, well, somebody in the chat room wrote some. Oh, oh, oh! They said uh, Taz is uh, Mexican Tamahu. Okay, now when we're dealing with the Mexican, I've already done uh, videos breaking down uh, that the Mexicans are not Tamahu, you know, um, and I already, uh, I think I told that story that maybe, maybe in two different videos. She was saying Taz is a Tamahu. Like, no, Taz is definitely not a Tamahu. This is the thing about the Tamahu family. We already know who the Tamahu is. The, the Tamahu are the created people. When the Tamahu hair get wet, it smells like wet dog. <laughs> you know, I'm just keeping it fine. If anybody's confused, yo, I mean, the Mexicans are the jam. Look, put some put some water in the Mexican hair, and then go see what it smells like. If it don't smell like wet dog, he's not Tamahu. <laughs> put the Mexican in the sun. If his skin don't burn, he's not Tamahu. I'm just I'm, I'm just putting it out there for the family who may be confused. Okay. okay. The Tamahu. Uh, is the one having sex with dogs, family. I've made, I've made a little cartoon. A little, the, the, the mom walks in on the daughter. The daughter says, oh, hey, mom, what, the, what, what are you doing with the dog? Nothing. That's Tamahu, family. We know, we know <laughs> the Tamahu. The Tamahu will kiss, a, tongue kiss a dog in your face. In your yeah, face. Yeah, I've seen it. I've seen it. So just imagine what they're doing behind closed doors. We got we to gotta understand who the Tamahu the, the family said Tamahu, uh, I'm sorry, said my brother Taz is Tamahu. And I seem contradicting. No, family, the Mexicans are not Tamahu. You know who the Tamahu is. You know, actually, there's a large part of the Mexican community that is darker than me. Mm-hmm. But you're just not going to see that represented on TV, just like you're not going to see, you know, uh, dark-skinned Asians represented on TV or uh, even dark-skinned uh, people in Africa. You know, the, mm-hmm. the modeling jobs go to the light-skinned girls or the girls who bleaching. The mm. family's talking about, uh, we know who the Tamahu is, family. We know who, the, the Mexican is not the Tamahu. And I, but nonetheless, I just want to address that person really quickly uh, about the Mexican and who the Tamil who is. Um, uh, and, you know, a lot of the family is asking questions and they want clarification. So, you know, the lines, the lines are open, 712-770-4160-4160. Participant code 915411, hashtag mm-hmm. or pound sign, whatever you call it. You know, mm-hmm. the, 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 the lines yeah. are open, family. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it's interesting you mentioned about And, you know, there is a certain issue right now in this country in regards to what what we call the caucusoid is, you know, bringing in more people in this country that are mostly not melanin rich like you and me. And do you feel that is more of a weapon used to try to push out the Negroes here in this country? Not only that, well, short answer, yes. Short answer, yes. Okay. Long answer, 
not only that, you know, see, this is this is this is the, the difference between us and them. We're playing checkers; they're playing chess. The family mm-hmm. going to act like they don't know what I'm talking about. But I'm so glad we brought this this topic up this year because next year, 2020, is, the, is when they're going to do the census. They do the census every ten years. Mm-hmm. Now, the, the last ten years ago, in 2010 because they hired a bunch of census workers to come and knock on people's doors. They knock on my door. I'm like, oh, Lord, what do these people want? I didn't answer the door the first time. They came okay. back again. I didn't answer the second time. They came back again. I'm like, God damn. So I think, like, we were coming in bringing groceries in or something, and they called us. <laughs> like, lady, what do you want? What do you want, Lady. I'm a census worker, and I'm here to, uh, uh, um, you know, get a head count. Now, this is the thing. There's no law saying you have to, you know, give them any information. You know, it's all voluntary. I get you. So, you know, I think it was me. I had my kids there. My cousin was there. We was mob deep. But, ma'am, it's only me here. Only, you know, if you see the kids and everything, bringing in groceries. You know, it's only me who lives here. Well, who are they and what are their names? No, no, no. See, see, you worry about the wrong things. Right now, right now, you worry about the wrong things. You know, I'm not gonna, I'm, you know. So now, what I'm saying is that I was talking to my mom and I said black people only make up. Thir- this is when I was a kid. I said black people only make up 13 percent of the population. She said that's not true. I say, yeah, yeah I that's what it's true. They, always, they keep school. entertaining that. They keep entertaining that for some reason. But go on, I'm listening. So I, she said, no, that's not true. And she said, you've got to realize there's a 15% margin of error within all things. She said, when these people come and knock on our door, you know, and this is when I was a kid, she said, when, when they came and knocked on our door and asked me who lived here, I told them it was just me. You know, mm-hmm. now keep in mind, Mom, Mom Duke said there's a lot of black people who do that. You knock on the door, they're going to say, look, it's just me here. All, all the while, it's like fucking seven people in there. So now uh, the head count is only based off what the people volunteered to them, you know. You so know, I now, never thought that. I never thought that, to be honest with you. I never thought that's that. That's why the 13% is skewed. Wow. You know, Crumb, you just, you just hit the nail on the market. You just brought up different a different it's like we're going real deep in the rap hole like how deep this hole goes and you're right a lot of people don't sit there and really give their census or sometimes they'll proclaim or you know answer because that is voluntary so they have to sit there make up you know and i find every decade or so they always say that we're consistently 13 percent. have you ever noticed that yep and you notice this when and i'm not sure if you were born in the 70s early mid 70s Late or mid seventies, you born? Eighty two. Okay, so during when you could recall as a boy, well, you know, we, we can't say because you didn't research till now. But let's say if we were like young boys in the nineties, right? And let's say put out say that the the population of black people is roughly thirteen percent. You hear this constant story for the next decade, and, and we're, we're approaching now 30 years. And I say, oh, 30 years, you tell me the black population here in America did not grow? And I find, and I always never question it. There's a few things that could play to that. One, is they're killing a lot of us or snatched up that we're not knowing of? Because killing babies cannot continue to stagnate a population of 30%. Because you look at the average household of black people, most black women on the average have over three three kids or more. I could be wrong. I don't know if you want to um, correct me on that. Well, right now? No, like even back then now. Like it, it, I think it's short now. I think it's like close to two. But 30 years ago, it was like over three. I mean, there's a number now. So how much children, you know, born? From, I, mean, I did oh. have numbers on yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, and if I if if I could elaborate on that really quickly, and I'll pass you the mic back in just a moment. Um, okay. I think, you know, we don't even have to look at the, the, the whatever that the government says. We can all just look at our own personal families. Brother, how many brothers and sisters do you have? 
For me, um, right now on my side, it's like over five brothers on this side. And family, they, they roughly vary. Some could be more than three. Okay. Now, um, for me, I got one sister. Um, and I, uh, I know a lot of, you know, my peers who may have had anywhere from, you know, three, four, two or three, four brothers or sisters. Now, we know uh, our great-grandparents, they had mm-hmm. 12, 13, 15 brothers and sisters. Now, we know that us as parents, on average, we have in, like, right now, how many kids do you have? None right now. You said none, right? Yep. Right. So now we, we can see where uh, the population has gotten smaller. Our population mm-hmm. has decreased because was we all, all of our great grandparents, had you know a ass of brothers and sisters, and their and, and their moms and dads had a lot of brothers and sisters. Like back then, women was pumping out kids, and we have saw, we have seen through Margaret Sanger and the uh, eugenics projects where they said, hey, these people are pumping out children left and right. We've got to get the pot- we've got to get the numbers down. So now you're going to see mm-hmm. where they, they have this thing called family planning. Family planning was to get the, the, the numbers of black people down. And by and large, it has worked. Our population, our great-grandparents had 10, 12, 13 brothers and sisters, and now, you know, we are down to three, four, and we have maybe one or two children. So we, we, we see, you know, in America, in America, keep in mind, there's, um, it's, it's not even a lot of black people in America, first off. The, the second most populated place where there are more black people other than Africa is South America and Brazil, to be, to be exact. There's more black mm-hmm. people in Brazil than anywhere else in the world other than Africa. So, you okay. know, in America, you know, we have a very low birth rate, the black people. Now, over there in Africa, oh, it's 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 the average is they, five. They 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 bust on the average five kids. Five children I mean, right now, right now they yeah. busting out children left and right. They not playing in Africa. That's why Bill mm-hmm. Gates is over there. Bill Gates, you know the the, the 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 fucking black population program in America is Gucci. They don't need to put no no billionaire, cazillionaire, trillionaire. Hey, we need Bill Gates. No, we need Bill Gates in Africa because they're popping out babies so fast that you know uh uh uh. uh in America, we've already slowed down their birth rate. We've already got mm-hmm. their birth rate down. So America, if you look at America's birth rate, black, white, orange, yellow, whatever, if you look at America's birth rate, the birth rate in America right now is 1.2 children. The birth rate right now in America is called the birth dearth. It's, there was a book written, Jane Elliott, uh, 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 um, uh, David Duke, all your leading white people will tell you about the birth dirt book that was written in the 70s uh, to say that the Europeans weren't having enough babies to, to, to sustain the population. More people mm-hmm. are dying than are being born. So to even the playing field, they had to slow our birth rate down. So what they've successfully done that, and we've seen that because, you know, we don't have the children our uh, brothers or sisters or, or or children or what have you that our that that our foremothers and forefathers had, you know, um, but they're now uh, are pushing that same agenda over in Africa, you know, same way you know with the hood, they, you know, it was AIDS and then it was condoms and then it was you know uh, Planned Parenthood and you know so on and so forth. So now mm-hmm. um, when we're dealing with population, the population, uh, the, the depopulation program is 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 in full effect and it's, and 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 it's it it. it it's working very well. However, it's not working good enough. That's why you're going to see these more drastic forms of depopulation that, you know, they're just putting the ideas out there right now with movies like The Purge. Have you ever seen the movie mm-hmm. The Purge, brother? I've seen pretty much, except the one that came out in, was it Netflix, the series? But I've watched pretty much all The Purge. Right. Same here, same here. I didn't really, you know, I don't really do the the Netflix reimaginings. I think, you know, the only one I really liked was with that black superhero, uh, Luke Cage, I think it was. Uh, other than yeah. that, I really wasn't dealing with anything on Netflix. But, yeah, the movie joint. So, yeah, you know, um, when we're dealing with population, uh, you know, we're going to see a, 
uh, or depopulation rather, we're going to see a very uh, white supremic uh, approach to how we're going to handle the planet because they're naturally not having babies, so they're just trying to implement the same thing on us. Uh, so because uh, if not, because even right now they are on par where they're not going to be here within the next 50 gen- – they're not going to make it 50 generations. A hundred genera- Within 50 to 100 generations, there will be no such thing as white people. And they know that. This is their last hurrah. Whatever it is they're going to do to sustain life, they got to do it now or forever hold their peace. Mm-hmm. So I would say projection, before we head to next century, they will probably might no longer be much of them around, or they might slowly cease to exist. The rate they're gone. If, if, if I'm just, I'm just being nice by throwing a number to next century. Like 20, at this 20, rate, 21 something. At this rate, you are right in that. Unless they pull a goddamn Hail Mary, you know, because uh, this whole uh, reptilian shit, that's not working. This mm-hmm. whole cloning shit, that's not working. Yeah, you're right. It's not really working. The, uh, I know the uh, Kim girls, we trying to block out the sun, that's not working. Yeah, I heard talk about that stupid shit. That's not wise, but yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. You know, they don't have anything. Brother, you dealing mm-hmm. with a very dangerous and formidable foe for the simple mm-hmm. fact they, they don't got nothing to lose. You'd be like, yo, the Indians said we did not expect them to poison the water because we all had to drink it. These yeah. people will cut... They will cut off their nose despite their face. Mm. They're burning the rainforest. That's 20% of the world's oxygen. They're on, it doesn't matter yeah. at this point. We're already going extinct. What, what's the, yeah. I mean, what difference is it going to make? We're going to take a couple of y'all out with us. We're going we're gonna to make our mark on this bitch. If not, if, you know, if worse come to worse, we're gonna we're gonna George Bush the button. We we're gonna yeah. we're gonna annihilate the whole planet. That's you ever seen the movie? The I'm sorry, you ever seen the cartoon series Thundercats? Yeah, I I remember everything. From the, I remember watching it. Yeah, what about it? Well, the the the, the overall story was their planet Thundera had exploded and they had to go somewhere else. Mm-hmm. Worst come the worst, they will fucking explode the planet. You're, what about what about the cartoon Superman? You ever seen the Superman cartoon? Yeah, I remember Superman. Yeah. Well, remember his home planet was Kryptonite? Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. I think they did, I'm sorry. They, 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 you're good. Right. Planet Krypton. His home planet was Planet Krypton. Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. And, uh, they, have TV, they have a TV series about Krypton before it exploded. What they were doing before it led to the destruction of the planet. I'm sorry, You're one more time. Right. Krypton, there is a TV series, uh, CW, titled Krypton. It is the story of how Krypton was and what led to the explosion. Mm. Yeah. 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 They have these things out here. I mean, this, see, right now what we're seeing, Crump, we're seeing the subliminal message come to real life. They're already telling what is to come. You know? That's right. And they're always talking about their, their structure. You know? Yep. Yeah, so so really I, I follow you. I get you. I get you. Um one thing I do want to include, um, in regards to the, the the population, you know, agenda that's been put out for some time now, that one thing when you have a species is in a negative rate of extinction, the only thing you do is like an animal is caged and it wants to unleash its full wrath. So when we see them put in propaganda with media, with help media, and our people fall into it, I would now say, okay, if I can't destroy you physically, then I'll have to breed you out within my population already by saying, all right, just don't interact with that male named man or woman. Interact with me. Let's continue on something. Because you heard about the projection of America 2053 about the brownie of America. It's really – what they want to do is whiten America completely, much faster. Mm. And why I'm saying that is because we already know since 
the late sixties when they knocked down message agent laws, they already been doing countless studies and analysts that who's going to go out the way to massage it the most after I make it legal so you can go and have someone that's not black. It started off with the man, black man first. So now that the black man is all right, hook, line, sinker to it for over 52 years, the next step to accelerate the destruction of the ADOS, the black man, black woman, especially here in the West, we call America, is to have the black woman now engage in the same intermingling. Because once you have both, one already doing it, the next step is to accelerate the so-called browning, or I like to call whitening, of what we call the West. You have to make the woman engage in it as well. Because without one or the other or two that's still making black children, because it takes two to make black children, right? right? If you have both of them start going that direction, then you will not, you, you could probably won't see much black children within two generations. Mm. If, they, if, they, if they go real hard at it, if they go real hard. That's why you see TV shows now. And I know you don't watch TV Crumb. I've noticed it where they have a lot of so-called black women, most like some of them look mixed with non-black men. And one thing, I will say this. This is what a friend told me, because I don't watch Krypton. In Krypton, the TV series, and people could vouch for me for this. I'm going to check the lines of anybody raising their hand. They have a black woman that's in somewhat charge of Krypton, the, I, that, that, um, the, the plant, and she's in a relationship with a non-black man, and they produce what we call black child. Like literally, I'm, 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 I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. Say that one more time, please. Listen, listen Crum. I am, I am not lying to you. In Krypton, the TV series, and I might have to watch it to really get to understand what really Jenna pushed out on it. They have the black woman as the queen of the the whole planet Krypton. A couple of them. Maybe Word. One. Yeah, and they have her engaged in interaction with a white man, and you know what they have produced? A black child, a black male child. See the games they play? They're trying to get this <laughs> They're trying to say, yo, listen, if you have sex with this white man, he's going you could still produce a nigga. I mean, well, you know, sorry. You you get my point. But really it does not. We never seen it. And another good book to read, Crump, and I kinda took a break from reading it. It's called Daughters of the Trade. You ever heard of this book? No. Yeah. I'm telling you. If you read that it will hurt your heart to what our, our ancestors have done during times of when the slave trade started to happen, especially in the Gold Coast or the West Coast of Africa. One white man said out of his mouth in the same reading of the few pages of the first chapter of the book, said that if I procreate with a black woman, I create another like myself. Ooh. That was deep. And I'm thinking when they, when they start, when these so-called caucasoids, back at the time when they were – we're consulting people in America about the Negro problem. You hear about the Negro problem? The, right. the president of Brazil said, you know how you do it? You interbreed with them, and you breed them out. See, that's, and, and, and that's the same thing um, that they did uh, with that Neanderthal gene. They, yeah, they, right. uh, they bred that gene in and carried it all the way till today. And we have to be careful about, you know, protecting our genes. Uh, you know, at one point because time, the average, the average, you know, if you look at the average black person here in America, and I hear black people say that they, they got a percent of white, white, white DNA, what we call Neanderthal, what we want to call DNA, but they got to understand that was forced on you. That twenty percent never existed centuries ago. That only came to existence when your mothers. And grandmas were raped by non-black men. Facts. You get me? That's yeah. why if you look at the average person, black person, regardless of just black, they will have some percent European so-called neanderthal yeah, so DNA, but it's a very, not a heavy, it's like a small percentage. You get me? Like roughly over 10%, maybe grade dependent. But nothing more than 20 It doesn't go exceed anything greater than 25% on the average. Because most black people, DNA that you know that's still African, Whichever part of Africa they're from, either the um, Nigeria, Ghana, or those parts of the West Coast. So that's where most of our answers came from, from the West Coast. You're going to still have portion above close to 70 or 75 higher percent of their genome. You know? Right. Yeah. But, but yeah, go on. I'm sorry to interrupt you. You were saying something. 
No, 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 no. You good? You good? You good? Um, yeah. but uh, I had actually I lost my place, but I think you had really ended it very well when you know you were bringing your points. <clears throat> uh, I, I no, actually, this is what I was uh thinking. Someone on the chat was saying they had raised their hand. That's what I was thinking. Um, is anybody uh, raised their hand? So my on mute. So my what? So my well, I didn't see my raising hand. Let me look. If y'all guys want to ask questions, please don't be afraid. This is my guest, Crumb Snatcher. He, uh, many guests I have on TRC, y'all know, you know, not afraid of controversy or will answer any question. I know y'all guys uh, like to. Yeah, sorry. No, you good. Olu Femira. She says, uh, I, I believe that's a, a sister. I, I may be wrong. If I am, I apologize. But uh, they said that they were going to call in. So uh, um, that's that, that's the point that I was uh, I was like, okay, let me not forget to mention that if she's up there, uh, you know, just want to be uh, considered. Keep talking. That. Let me, I'll put the number in again. MJ, if you're there, um, put the number again for people that, that's in the chat room that want to call in. If not, I'll put it in. You keep talking. I uh, address this. Okay, okay. Yeah, so um, just going back to that last point, because I know I kind of went roundabout, talking about that man that married that black girl. I don't know if they were married or not, but they had a baby together, and he messed around and just, you know, this was just one rape that they're talking about. I get it, but, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if he was consistently raping her over an extended period of time. You know, it probably yeah. It's it's won't. been proven that yeah, she's been raped more than once because right time, yeah. When, when they do autopsy and check the body, yeah, that and mind you, there was she sent tweets and conversation with her friends on how she didn't want to be around her actual biological father. She felt uncomfortable because her father was violent and also. But you know, the one thing that hurt me out of most crumb at the find the story is that to the mother and mind you. Women, a lot of parents will know when something's wrong with their children. I, I, I don't believe, and I could be wrong, but I know for every parent that if your child is something wrong, you would know. You would question and then either best do something. You don't sit there to speculate or think that everything's good, you know, because your child always come home with something wrong, whether it's a mood swing, an attitude. There's always signs to tell something that has happened, you know. Right, and I feel the mother did not do a well good job to really look into it more. Either she was, and I think, be honest with you, I think she might have, she was aware that the man was doing something. But there's no way in hell you're brutally raping somebody or doing something much more extent, and there's no some form of some form of scar, depending on how he's doing it. You know. Well, but, you know, for me, I just. Yeah. We have a past. We have a past that has not, you know, been reconciled. You know, even if we look from the Freedmen's Bureau, which was a failed uh, reconstruction initiative uh, 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 post-slavery, uh, to even race relations now with the cops killing children like uh, Tamir Rice, uh, Michael Brown, and um, Trayvon Martin. So mm-hmm. um, we we always have had a checkered past with them, and I believe with good reason we should not, you know, trust them. And I and I know a lot of the rational family, rational family, they'll say, "Well, crumb, mm-hmm. that could have happened with anybody." And mm-hmm. I will say, "Yes, that's true." However, because of my previous experience, you know, these people have a history. You know, if you go to court, let's say, brother, I'm going to tell you, if you, I'm just, this is a true story or, 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 okay. or, or, or a very reasonable scenario. If you get a speeding ticket mm-hmm. and, um, you know, they would consider it, uh, I think you're doing a speed over 20 miles, reckless driving. A speed over twenty miles or uh, twenty miles per hour, uh, reckless mm-hmm. driving. You can uh, go to jail for that. You know, you go to jail mm-hmm. just for. Um, oh, okay. Uh, 
uh, we, we got somebody on the line. Yeah, yeah, I, I see. Now, I just want you to finish your story so I can open this line. Oh, uh, oh, dang. They, they, they kind of threw me off right then. Um, what was I talking about again? I'm sorry. You were talking about, uh, about a case you had with court about speeding ticket and they're putting you in jail? Oh, right. But uh, I think previously said I was talking about white people and uh, just, just having a natural distrust for them because, oh, well, you know, white people say, well, yeah, that, that could have been anybody. And I say, yeah, oh, yeah. So, you know, you get a speeding ticket and you haven't, but it, and it's reckless driving, you haven't had a speeding ticket in over 10 years. And the speeding ticket you got over 10 years ago, it wasn't even like nothing serious. They will use that against you in a court of law. They'll be like, yo, but he had, you know, when trying to prosecute you and get you thrown in jail, even if it's for like 10 days, even if it's for just 10 days, when, when, when they're trying to get you to, uh, 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 they're pursuing jail, you know, because some, mm-hmm. some of these cities are very small. They don't have an economy. They make money off tickets. They make mm-hmm. money off, 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 off the judicial and jail system, you know, off the prison system. That's a part of these small town prison industrial complex. So now um, they're going to bring up your past. So now when I'm dealing with white people, I, I deal with white people like they deal with me. And you, when you go into court, they're going to bring up your past. So, mm-hmm. you know, when, when I deal with them, I bring up their past. Oh, well, you know, you bring up the past. Well, does that do that to me when I go to court? I ain't been in trouble in the last 20 years, but I guarantee you, you go to court, they're going to bring up something that happened 20 years ago. Yeah. And so that, yeah, shoot. So I, you know, look, it could have happened with anybody. That's a true statement. But I don't deal with them like that because I, because I know they pass. Uh, we, we can take the caller if, if, if you would be so gracious. All right, the caller, if you there. All right. Um, let me, let me check. Right. I think the call went through. All right, call again, please. Oh, there, there you are. Open your line. All right, caller, I'll open your line. Oh, let me see if my thing's going. One second. What the hell? One second. Let me see if my internet's still on. Um, Tyrone, are you there? Can you open this line, Tyrone? No. Let me, let me open my other computer. Give me a second, caller. <laughs> Please stay on the line. Please stay on the line. For all the listening audience, I'm your brother Crumb. Uh, you can find me on Instagram, Crumb TV underscore. Oh. She's there? No, no, no. I'm, I'm just going to – let me see if I can refresh it, see if this will fix it. You know how the internet is to be acting up now. Stay on line. Let me see if I can contact my account to open this line while I wait. I don't know why it has to do this now. She said, does it sound like I'm breaking up? No, no, I didn't, oh. I didn't open your line yet. Oh, okay. Can you hear me now? Oh, no, okay. That was you? Okay. Yeah, I can you. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Um, yeah, um, uh, yeah, I, I just been, you know, kind of concerned about that, you know, as far as like, um, uh, about like, uh, you know, from from what Crumb said, you know, about, you know, I learned from like about, from him, and I went deeper into about the the Tamahu thing and stuff like that. So it kind of gave me a great uh lead on everything about like, you know, the indigenous people and uh. What else? Um, and then, like, how everything kind of comes to play. And then, you know, just from the obvious, uh, you know, the obvious uh, clues, I would say, you know, of, like, you know, with these so-called Mexicans or Hispanic people. And I just, you know, I just don't wonder, like, are they, like, like are, aren't they, like, really just a mixed breed, like, uh, you know, with the indigenous Mexicans and also, like, you know, like the, the Tamahu that kind of been, like, trying to take over lands and stuff like that. So I I just been wondering, you know. So and I and I thought like Taz was like, you know, 
pretty much that, like a Hispanic. So it's like, you know, like, what do you, like, what do you say about that? Like, we meet Taz. What's Taz talking about? Uh, from, um, from, Crum, uh, from, from the Crumbs, uh, thing with the Crumb TV. He does, uh, oh, videos. I don't know about anybody about Taz, but I think he answered Crumb. I think he answered your question. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, first, brother, could you tell me your YouTube channel and, and uh, uh, well, sorry, the name of your YouTube channel and, and uh, the city and state you're calling from? It's, uh, my YouTube channel is Olafemi Ra, and um, the city state is uh, uh, Charleston, South Carolina. Shout out to uh, uh, Charleston, South Carolina in the house. Salute. Yeah, what's up? That's what's up. Yeah. yeah. I'm, even, though I don't, even though I don't really like Charleston, because you know all uh, the coon activity and whatnot, but it's a it's a historic you know place to learn everything from how everything kind of started because it's a port city from you know with the slave trade and all that. So yeah, yeah. You ever heard of the Stono Wars? I'm oh, sorry, the Stono the Stono Rebellion. Uh it sounds familiar, but I, but I've been looking into the the Gullah Wars and stuff like that, and how in it with like Gullah Jack and um. What's the other dude? Um, Gullah Jack and um, the other dude with that uh, that church, and they were like uh, executed because, huh? Denmark VC. Yeah, exactly. Like they were executed, and it was kind of weird because um, because that church that 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 um that church that Dylan Roof um shot up, it was the same one. So it had me thinking like. Is there like a connection to why he would shoot that place up and stuff like that? You know, that from Denmark like Vesey's church. Yeah, yeah, it, it's very crazy, very crazy. But yeah, I was just kind of concerned about like, but back to what I was saying, I was kind of concerned about um, like the question I had in mind is like, is the Hispanic people that we know today, are they like really just a mixture of like you know? of the, the Tamahu and the indigenous uh, Mexicans, because I see there's some Afro-Mexicans or something like that. And um, I was just wondering from that. Right. Now, when we're dealing with Hispanic, Hispanic is a misnomer. That was a, that was a title made up by uh, Richard Nixon, Richard right. Nixon's administration. Uh, so, oh, you know, prior he's going to create it? Yeah, prior to him. You know, it's just it's just like with African American. That was that was Jesse Jackson. Oh, okay, you know, okay, okay. They be making okay. shit up, and we just go along with it. It's like, you know, this th- these ideas aren't even real. It's just they're yeah. they're using the fact that we don't know what's going on against us. You know, they say ignorance is bliss. No, brother, ignorance is sin. They said, uh, 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 what you don't know won't hurt you. No, brother, what you don't know will hurt you. So now uh, when we're dealing with Hispanics, there's no such thing as a Hispanic. Now when we're dealing with the census, which me and uh, the family uh, here at Chaos Reign was talking about, was um, the uh, United States census, which happens every 10 years. So now when we look at the United States census, we're going to see – um, white people's populations dwindling. Now, to keep their numbers robust, they're going to have to create different ideas because even the idea of a white man is simply an idea. He knows he's right. a jerk. He knows he's a Jew. He knows he's an Ashkenazi Jew. He knows that he's a, a Turk or whatever he may be. Uh, but they're going to go over under the banner of white. So now this idea of Hispanic is the newest addition to be added to the banner of white, same way that, that uh, uh, um, Jews were eventually uh, uh, added as white, just the same way that Italians were eventually added as white, the same way that Irish were eventually added as white. Now you have the Hispanics are now officially are, 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 are Latinos who, who, have, who have now identified as white people. And these, this, is not, this is nothing more than an idea to keep trumping up the numbers of the white population to make you feel like a minority 
when I tell you that white people are 60% of the, of, of the population, which really what I mean is white people are less than 36% of the population. And the difference to how I even got to 60% was the Hispanic population, which I used to make me look like something I'm not. Mm. Okay. So there's, your, there's your Hispanic uh, 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 um, jive, not you, but the idea itself, uh, we're going to have to throw that in the trash. So now when we're dealing with these people who we now can confirm are not Hispanic, mm-hmm. the island, I'm sorry, excuse me, the name uh, Hispanic comes from the island of Hispaniola. Are you familiar uh, with the island of Hispaniola? No, nah, no, nah, I'm not. Where is even that? Hispaniola is now currently known half as the Dominican Republic and the other half as known as the natives is IAT, but known as the Americans as Haiti. Oh, that okay. island right there is that originally was called uh, uh, the island of Hispaniola. Who okay. named it Hispaniola? The Spaniards when they came over. See, that's Why what I'm saying, Spaniards? though. Like, go ahead. I'm sorry. You can go ahead. Why did the Spaniards name it Hispaniola? Because the, because the first person to come over here was an Italian by the name of Christopher Columbus, but the Spaniards were the only ones who would give him a ship. The Santa Maria, the whatever this and the whatever that. They go to the island of Hispaniola. So now, because we don't even know white people's shit, they can just throw this shit around, you know, and just play on their perception, and we just fall right into it. So right. now when we're dealing with these Hispanics, when they went to the island of Hispaniola, they were dealing with uh, with uh, um, Haitians, which we know mm. were from West Africa, or the Akan people, or what mm-hmm. we call the Ashanti tribe. Okay. So now these Africans come over there, and the and the Africans uh, um, are. Are uh, not only come over there, but there are some dark-skinned people already over there by the exactly. name of Arawaks and Tainos. Oh, okay. So now okay. when you look at these Arawaks and Tainos, we're going to find that they are an off-breed of the Olmecs. When we say Mexican, Mex, M-E-X, well, I'm sorry, when we say Mexico, M E X I C O. Mex comes from Old Mec. Oh. Mex comes okay. from Old Mec. The, 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 I'm sorry, M E. The X comes from the Zing. I'm sorry, it's not pronounced with a Z. Yeah, it is pronounced with a Z. Comes from the Zing dynasty, but it's pronounced. Oh, wow. but, it, but it's written. When the Asians came over on the on the on the Bering Strait, rem- right mm-hmm. now I don't know if you know this, but right now you can stand in Alaska and see. And I did. Now I'm not talking about no fucking binoculars, no fucking Google Maps. I'm talking if you stand on a certain position on Alaska, you can see Russia. Are you aware of that, brother? Yeah, I heard that from uh, what you said that before, and I looked into that for you. You know, right now, you, you, you know, you got to be at, uh, on some Olympic swimmer shit to swim from Cuba <laughs> to Florida Keys. Yeah. You can be a regular nigga like you and me and swim from Alaska to, to, to fucking uh, Russia. It's not even All like right. no real Olympic type of mission. An uh, out-of-shape person could make it. Uh-huh. So now um, the Bering Strait was there with that piece. It's not even a big piece. That piece froze over. Like, oh, the, the, the ice bridge. Uh, you could call it an ice bridge, but that, you know, that that little span is just a hop, skip, and a jump. So now the Asians come over on the Bering Strait, and the Olmecs are already here. The Asians and the Olmecs mix, and the offspring are called uh, Mexicans. So now you're dealing with Asians, and now you're dealing with uh, with uh, with Africans, the, the, uh, the Olmecs, or what the Aztecs call the rubber people. There's no Asian, I'm sorry, there, there's no Tamil who, a.k.a. the white man, in here until uh, four, 1492 when Columbus sailed the, no, the ocean blue. When he first came over here, he came in peace. The second time he came over here, he came to the island of Hispaniola with, with uh, Hernandez Cortez and the conquistadors. 
and they went over to the Aztec Nation and they fought Montezuma. Oh, wow. This is, brother, this is, this is the 1500s. That's only five white people bloodline don't even come over here until just 500 years ago. Mm-hmm. The white man bloodline uh, just came over here. So the 1492, Columbus sells the ocean blue. 1500s, Cortez comes over here. By the time they come yeah. over here, 1510, 1511, it, 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 brother, it's only 2020. That was only 500. Yeah. That's not even like a long time ago, for real, for real. Yeah. So yeah. these, what we call Mexicans, the only reason you think Mexicans look a certain type of way or perceive them to be is because there's a small portion of them that look like that that have been pushed forward in the media, and they're just not going to show you the other ones. They call it, uh, when they do that shit in uh, Africa, and, and they portray it a certain type of way to make money and shit, they call that poverty right. porn. Exactly. Where they're going to present exactly. Africa as some fucking death hole. Some, well, I'm sorry, uh, Donald Trump called it a shithole. They're going to exactly. portray it as poverty porn where you're only going to see a certain aspect. And they right. do it all the time. So now when you're looking at, 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 at the quote-unquote Mexico, you go to Honduras, you're going to see people look like Dr. Sebi. Nobody in Honduras Looks, there's nobody in Honduras my complexion, brother. Nobody in Honduras mm. my com- All of those people, 99.999% of all the people in Honduras, Central America, directly under Mexico, they all are uh, 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 black, black, black. Mm-hmm. I'm, uh, you know, I don't know if y'all seen the movie CB4. I'm black. And I'm black and he's black and I'm black. Not you know, he, that, oh, that was a light skin. skin. Oh, okay. Okay. But but no, well, the people in Honduras are are pitch black. Those are dark skinned people. They not even like no brown skinned people. They they not even brown skin over there. They, they there's no black people down there. Oh, you okay. Know, so who but, make but we, I don't know what the family thought they looked like down there. I don't know what the media has 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 implanted. But the reality, oh, them people down there, they, they, you know, this whole I know they had to be. I'm sorry. I, I, no, I was just saying, like, I know they had to be a uh, black down there because, you know, um, they like to piss that on the front, like that, um, that, uh, that Mexico is like, you know, with the complexion you see from all from the media, and there, it's, go there ahead, are I'm three sorry. Americas. Three. What are what are the three Americas, brother? Uh, you got the native, well, Central yeah. America, oh, my bad, and yeah. South America. Exactly, exactly. There are more black people down there than up here. So if there are more of them down there than even over here, mm-hmm. then how do we account for all these light-skinned-ass Mexicans, all these light-skinned-ass South Americans, all of uh. them? Everybody down there is dark skinned. You mm-hmm. go down the further you go down, the darker it gets. Right, because of the uh, not, you not know the, dark, the way how the sun skin. is. And not only that, right, they, 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 they're, they're on a goddamn equator. Yeah, exactly. The sun, the greatest, the sun is, yeah. the greatest miracle Jesus ever performed was maintaining a lily white complexion on a goddamn equator. Mm-hmm. Looking light and 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 and, and lily white oh, and, okay, in fucking Africa, and, 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 and blazing, in 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 blazing in the blazing deserts of Egypt. Mm-hmm. These people have have you know the uh, Dr. Francis Cress Welsing, who came under who came up under the tutelage of Dr. Neely Fully. Fuller Jr. Dr. Neely Fuller Jr. said, if you don't understand white supremacy, everything else will confuse you, brother. Verily I say unto thee, brother, when we're dealing with Mexicans, Guatemalans, Hondurians, you know, uh, uh, Panamanians, brother, brother, those not even your cousins. Those are your brothers and sisters. Yep. The Tamil who is a is a is a is a is a is a is a, is a, is a genetic anomaly that is fairly new. 
Johnny yep. Hum Lately. That's who you're dealing with, brother. Exactly. That's who you're dealing with. The Johnny exactly. Come Lately, their bloodline is a new bloodline. And That's just to go back to my brother, I want to get back to uh, Chaos Reign. You know, okay. Uh, I, 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 yeah, I, I, yeah, I, yeah I, no I, problem. Thank you, thank you for calling. I have another call. Let me see what this is. All right. All right, who's this? Uh, hey, uh, this thing, guy. What's going uh, on, Gary? Oh, yeah. I, I, I actually, yeah, I'm just listening, man. I'm just, I'm, I'm absorbing, listening. Um, I really got nothing to say. I'm just, just trying to uh, catch up with you guys as far as the conversation. So I sit back. No, 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 brother, 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 stay on the line. Oh, mm-hmm. uh, this means yeah, you're talking he, to me. Yeah, he's going to. Hold on, guys. Hold on. He's going to stay. No one's leaving. Um, somebody wrote in the chat room, when did and when did the French come here? I'm not sure you want to answer that. Um, Crumb, if you, you know, the French. Now, um, really quickly, that brother who was just on the line, you can't disconnect the new brother who just came on. Please stay on the line. That's who I was talking to. I want to thank oh, you for okay. calling in, brother, uh, from South Carolina. Shout out to the family down there in Charleston. Thank you so much for calling in. Peace and love. All right, peace. Cool. Thank you. And um, before I get to the question, the new caller, can you tell us your name and uh, or your name on 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 the internet and uh, what city and state you're calling from? JNYC. Okay. Shout out to you said NYC, right? Yeah, that's correct. Uh, peace and love to all the family and the Big Apple. Uh, just to share this, you know, fun little tidbit, my biggest following is in New York. You know, my family, I grew up, all the family, all my people who know me are in Virginia. And Virginia is a six. There's nothing big happening out there. And for as little as going on out there, I'm not on the radar. But when it comes to NYC, with as much as going as on in, in NYC, I am on the radar. Radar. I want to give a big shout out to NYC because don't nothing get past those city slickers. They pay attention to everything, and even Crumb Snatcher. You know, you know they see. I guess you know real recognize real, and you know New York definitely sees me, and that means a lot to me. So, uh, 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 big up to NYC. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, now um, back to chaos reign, brother. What were we talking about again that you wanted me to expand on? My apologies. Somebody wrote. Somebody wrote in the chat room about when did the French came. I think they're saying when the French came to the soil, or just in general, the French. Oh yeah, the the French. See, now this is the thing. During this time period, Napoleon was in control of France. Because keep 1492, Columbus sells the ocean blue. We're just leaving the 1400s, 1492. In eight years, we're going to be into the 1500s. Mm-hmm. So now, um, uh, 1500s, Napoleon comes into, into the picture. Now, Napoleon is on a war path, but here's Napoleon's problem. Napoleon is being funded by the Rothschilds. Now, Napoleon is going to war with, with, with Russia, and Russia is being funded by the Rothschilds as well. So now we have this war, and, 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 and just for the family, you know, to whom it may concern, Napoleon knew that, that the Rothschilds were funding both sides of the war. And Napoleon said, had he gone to war with the fucking Rothschilds, he'd be the king of the world right now. But, really? you know, he... I really? hindsight is 2020. 20, so what can you say? So now um, uh, Napoleon is doing his thing on land. Keep in mind, 1500s, uh, 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 the British are doing their thing. You know, in terms of the sea, it is said that the that that the sun never set on the British Empire because they were just traveling everywhere on on the sea. The British ruled the seas. Other than the Moors, the British ruled the sea. The only people were in the 1500s. I need you to follow me. The only people that were uh, giving the British any type of trouble were the buccaneers, the buccaneers and the pirates. That's where we go with the pirates of the Caribbean. Jack Black, not, not, I don't know if his name was Jack. Is that I mean, pirates Black. of the Caribbean? Yeah, Jack, Jack Sparrow. Sparrow. Yeah. You know, so now we're dealing with... Uh, uh, you know, that time period. And um, so now after that time period, 
well, not after that time, but during that time period, uh, 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 Napoleon is uh, running out of funds because the Rothschilds are now cutting off his funds. And his cash cow, Hispaniola, which is now modern-day Haiti, the, you know, because keep in mind, uh, King Cotton doesn't come up on, a, on the radar as of just yet. At, the, at that particular time, the number one export of, of that century was sugar. Europe had yes. ha- sugar. Uh, um, sugar. Uh, Europe never tasted sugar prior to them going to the island of Hispaniola. They never, they, brother. Can you imagine never having sugar your whole goddamn life and you taste it? Your That's whole what they're so addicted to it now. Yeah. So now, mm-hmm. um, uh, uh, old boy comes over there. They uh-huh. claim it as Spain, Hispaniola. Uh, but then the French, they uh, come over next, and I forgot what happened, but I believe maybe there was a war. Maybe they bought it from them. Bear with me for not knowing those details. I apologize. But something happened, and the, the, the ownership exchanged hands. That's why a lot of Haitians to this day speak French, you know. Um, so, uh, you know, Spain just caught, cut their losses. And, you know, they went into, you know, because of, of Hernandez, Hernandez Cortez and the conquistadors, they just went over into Latin America or what is now known as Latin America. But France stayed in the island of Hispaniola because uh, the sugar thing was, 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 was their cash crop. But now uh, the Rothschilds have just pulled funding. Um, they're getting resistance from the Africans. Uh, what they call at that particular time the Maroons, led by a woman named Queen Nanny. And uh, even right now, the $500 bill, one of the highest currencies in Jamaica, bears the, uh, the, the uh, face of Queen Nanny. Why we in America are still waiting to get Harriet Tugman on the $20 bill and get Andrew Jackson uh, 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 bitch ass off you know, they had uh-huh. Queen Nanny on their shit from, you know, I think uh, when they got their independence in 1972, or I believe it was in 19, August 6, 1972. Uh, I may be off a year or so. My apologies. But I digress. So now um, uh, uh, um, France is in um, uh, H- Hispaniola, but, there's, but, but, but they're losing because of the revolt and the funding is being pooled. And in the midst of all of this, the Russians have, 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 have adopted a new strategy, and they're kicking France's ass. Um, they just mm-hmm. basically burn everything down and, and, and run. <laughs> That's like, look, we can't fight them face up. So, you know, because they were on the offensive, they went into Russia. So they're like, listen, it's about the snow. We're going to burn. We're going to eat all the food we can eat. Whatever we can't carry, whatever we can't eat, we burn it. So by the time they get to the city, it won't be nothing here. And they're in our territory, miles and thousands of miles away from home. We just keep leading them deeper, deeper into the Siberian, and eventually they'll die off. And exactly that's what happened. So now they lost fucking a third or maybe uh, 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 three quarters of their, of their uh, battalion. Now they got to go back. They lost against the Russians simply because they couldn't keep chasing them. Uh, they lost against uh, 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 Toussaint, uh, 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 I'm sorry, Toussaint, Toussaint Overture, and Dessalines. Overture and Dessalines, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. They're losing to their military. You know, and, you know, uh, 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 Napoleon is supposed to be the, the military genius of the world, but right now he can't cut it because there's just too much going on and, you know, uh, your money is all the way across the sea, and you don't got no navy like talking about. And the people who rule the sea right now, they not feeling you like talking about. So who rule the sea? Crumb, Great Britain, and Great Britain don't really like uh, 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 France at this particular time because France is helping out with the American Revolution, Bro- brother. What's mm-hmm. going on at this time? The American Revolution. Why does uh, New York? Shout out to New York one more time. Why does New York have the Statue of Liberty over there? Because when they were fighting against Great Britain, France came to uh, uh, the uh, United States aid and in appreciation. Uh, 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 they they put the uh, the Statue of Liberty 
over in the in uh, Ellis Island. So now Great Britain don't don't fuck with France because you didn't help America in the in, in, in the revolution. So now you can't even get your ships over to uh, Haiti. France can't can't get no ships over there because they don't have enough manpower to get over there. Because Great Britain rules the seas. The sun never mm-hmm. set on the British Empire. Wow. But you know uh, we're going on two and a half hours, brother. I gotta. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, you know, because we we're passing the hour, and I, I was going to say I was going to take the last question, but I think let me check the line. See so anybody has one last further questions before we wrap up. Oh, I guess no one else has no further questions on the line. And let me check the chat room, and it looks like it's. Oh no. Yeah. Oh so, yeah, my brother guess, from New York. Guess, He's still on the line with us. Yeah, um, Jay, do you have any one question or any question to ask Crum as I conclude tonight's session? Talking to me or are you talking about the New York dude? JNYC. Okay, he's not there. All right. Um, for closing, um, can you give your um, links again, um, Crum? Absolutely. You can find me on YouTube. Uh, my YouTube channel is simply Crumb TV. You know, no ego involved. You know, it's, it's bigger than Crumb Snatcher. You know, it's a brand. Uh, you can also find me on Instagram. Again, Crumb TV underscore, uh, because it's, it's not a I thing. It's not a me thing. It's a us thing. It's a we thing. You can find me, lastly, on Facebook. Uh, my personal page is Crumb Snatcher. Uh, I've been blocked. I'm usually always blocked. Uh, my backup page is uh, Timmy Till, but, you know, that's, that's small things to a giant. We're not going to talk about that. But my business page on Facebook is the one thing I want to brag about, and I want to save the best for last. On my business page, I've got almost 40,000 followers. So if you, if you do have a Facebook account, be sure to check for uh, Crumb TV, the business page um, and, you know, uh, see what I'm doing over there to get such a uh, good response. I want to thank all of the family here at Chaos Reign for allowing me to be on the platform. You know, it really does mean everything to me. And I want to just, you know, let the family know, um, when I'm, when I'm rocking with the family, on, when I'm on YouTube, when I'm rocking with the family doing a podcast, I'm rocking with Chaos Reign. Peace and love. Okay. Thank you. All right. All right. All right. I like to thank everybody for listening to tonight's session. I like to thank Crumb Snatcher. Um, maybe down the line we'll probably do another session on some other things. You know, wherever it comes to mind. You know, he is no stranger to the show. You know, and I know. And also hit him up on his links, IG, Facebook, and if you're not subscribed to his channel on YouTube, I I suggest you do. I'm saying he's up to ten thousand strong, and it's going to probably grow further moving forward. By the year ends, you know, because, you know, YouTube is a different monster in itself. And, you know, that's where most of the things are at right now, you know, besides all these other platforms that like to play, you know, politics and, you know, shut you down for like 30 more days, you know. Uh, we, we got it. We had to make ourselves more useful and spread out the information as best as possible. Other than that, thank you all for listening for tonight's session. Until next time, good night.